Hey, everybody in the studio, can I have your attention for a second here? <laughs> Nick! Nick! Nick, I need your attention. What? Uh, we have a drive with errors on the corridor raid. It's showing that the, the drive is at risk. So you guys have important files. Now is the time to go with me into the back room and verify that they are copied over. We've been, we went over this, and when, and when the raid broke down the first time, I was like, Nico, we shouldn't do a raid system again. And he's like, oh, it'll be fine. And... <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. Less than two years later. <laughs> About to set the PUBG at it, but this Origin computer sound driver keeps crashing. Have you seen the latest edit? Mm -mm. I'm expecting that Sam's put his own twist on it, and there's probably some good ideas in there. I'm also expecting it to miss a couple of things I'm trying to do with it. What'll probably be the case is I'll probably work in the beats that I'm looking for, and keep a lot of the cool, like, snappy stuff that Sam's worked in as well. Some things, especially in action scenes, you don't, they don't register until the piece is completely done, because there's visual effects, sound, and music that contribute towards certain things being recognizable beats of a scene. Interesting ideas in there, um, but a lot of the pacing is very different than what I'm looking for. I edited it to be what I intended. When we did Lifeline, well, you know, we got notes from a billion different people, so, you know, other towns and people are working on it, they didn't do a bad job or anything like that. But with the Corridor channel right now, I have a little bit of that baggage where when I direct something right now, I want it to be exactly what I want it to be. Maybe to the detriment of the piece, who knows? And God! Merlin's pants. Fantastic. Subscribe and track record with the videos on the channel this year, so. <laughs> if you're going to go back on somebody's work, if you're going to change it, like I need to, I need to get it really polished because I can't just show like a janky rough cut of my idea because it's going to look like garbage up against an actual refined edit, no matter what kind of edit that is. If I don't get this edit done before Sam gets back from his trip, it's going to be a lot harder for me to make this edit reflect what I was trying to do when I was directing the piece because everybody's going to look at my edit if it's not finished and just think it looks way worse than what Sam's put together. What's happening? Um, server's acting up a little bit, so came in here to restart it. I don't know. Everything's backed up too a few days ago. Yeah, but we've done a lot of stuff since. Okay, uh, Carmichael, we got some mega data dumps. Here's what I'm thinking, and it's kind of risky, but it'd be the fastest option. I back up our most recent projects. Um, onto a third backup. I also back up a couple of our, like, our essential operating things like VFX materials, sound, all that kind of stuff. So I go to a completely fresh set of drives, wipe them, drop the new stuff on there. But for that one moment when they're wiped, we'll only have everything in one spot. I don't like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Dude, there's a backup raid now. It's fine. The backup raid backs up every night until no one checks it and there's power loss and then we lose a week of work. What I'm trying to do is summarize the entire Bill of Rights in 30 seconds. The raid is down, and I can't work on the PUBG edit. So I gotta fix the raid first before I can work on the PUBG edit. Right now, I need to spend the day working on the frickin' raid and not on my edit, so this whole goal of getting this done is getting pushed back. When, when does Sam get here? Uh, Sam gets back. Dude, that was the longest drive of my life, <laughs> but it was worth it. Speaking of drives. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, a, is there a raid issue? Yeah, we're having uh, a drive supporting errors on the raid. So everything's all backed up onto the backup raid at this point. Um, with me about to do a triplicate backup before jumping into fixing the main raid. Cool. Oh yeah, this is all perfect right. timing. Hey Spencer. Do you like to drive? Yes. I don't know what Michael's just like. He loves puns because he's talking about disc drives now because we have a bad one in the corridor raid. Woo! What? <laughs> and they were playing choppy. Everything else is generally copying over pretty quick. Uh, there's one file in particular that's not reading. That's um, a good program. What's that? It's a good plugin. Particular? Oh, God. Truck. Deep learning. So it is at there's, risk. A, there's a Western Digital program you can get that <clears> will do a smart test. So just. I would love to get back on here and edit though, which I'll do after lunch, so. 
I sat down and basically a couple of things I really liked. That opening shot with the force field um, mm -hmm. right at the top, like that's great. And then Carmichael had a suggestion, which is to make that shot either the POV of the C-130 or have the C-130 enter the shot. I went back and I wanted to just try editing what I had directed for. You'll notice there's a lot of stuff not used slash cut with the guy, the, 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 the anonymous squad. A lot of time on set was spent filming these close-up shots. You know, these guys, they literally have numbers next to their names in the script. They could not be any more meaningless. You know, enemy one, enemy two. It's like, I would just say like, my main critique of the, the process from filming it to editing it to like what will end up being the final product though. I think bringing a little more clear direction into how you shoot this opening scene. Not the run, no, the running was like five shots, but then there's, you see, there's this block of like 17 clips of these just guys walking around mm -hmm. talking and we're gonna spend no time with these characters in the final piece. So it's like taking some of that forethought and bringing it to on set there to just kind of make things a little more, spend less time shooting it, knowing you're not gonna need a lot of footage, focus on maybe the fight sequence or so, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's that's my big critique that I just need to get out of the way because- No, that's, that's, that's good. And actually, it, Carmichael had a good suggestion for yeah. that scene too, which is up to that point, up to that scene where they stop and they're walking through the trees, everything's very handheld, we're, we're with them, we're in the action. And then we got a couple of those dolly shots and so if you actually commit to no handheld stuff, like so it's like you're in the action, in the action, running, jumping, shooting, he hides, and then boom, dolly shots. And you stay in the dolly shots until Rick and Wilkie, Dave and Jane Guta. Held. Oh. So it's like you're like you're with him, you're with him, you're like out watching as a third part party viewer, like you know, getting cinematic, then boom, back into it. And that's actually there's a really nice cinematography change. There's an act there's actual bots on YouTube that scan content, that scan the image of the thumbnail, scan tags. But one of the things that some of the bots look for are inappropriate languages with, a, and they have a list of words and what they, those words would sound like. So the safest way to do it is try to incorporate bleeping out words. What if we didn't use normal bleeps and like we actually just recorded, dude, that Sam, when Sam like, Sam will just like do this really funny scream. I can't even explain it. It's like <laughs> basically it. So like, I think we, let's go record some Sam. What are you doing? Some, so we want to start bleeping out swear words on the channel, and but we set, don't want to use bleeps. Yeah, that's <laughs> super boring. So could we get some of your your famous screams? Your screams? I thought we were gonna Sam, just let me see you when you're really angry. I, I, no, never, I thought we were just gonna do like bleeping it with like. Our nation. Have you guys ever seen Sam when he's angry? He's really scary. No, I'm like, not screaming. I'm not. Don't. <laughs> 101. Just give us one to use. Man. Just one, man. Dude, I found a list. 101 great swear <laughs> slash cuss word alternatives. <laughs> Which what For are kids. They? What are they? Merlin's pants. <laughs> Caesar's ghosts. <laughs> Fiddlesticks. Love that one. Snickerdoodles. <laughs> wow, these are like the, the worst. That. There's, I just sent you on Slack the advertiser's guideline or advertiser friendly guideline. Words and how words sound are being searched through YouTube videos via bots to be demonetized. Shaz butt. <laughs> Dude. That so, sucks. Dude, does that, does that make you angry? Yeah, it does. It's making me so you angry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <coming. laughs> Fiddlesticks. Amazing. <laughs> give, me, give me a variety of the word subscribe. Sub subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe! Sub of a scribe. Look up some Welsh swear words and then try to pronounce them. Theoric min pot jam! Rick and Vilke, Dave and Jane Guta! Farting like a sheepdog on a short chain. That's what I just said. Real quick, just say a sentence with a bunch of swear words and it go. You, they'll never go on the internet. Huh. Here you do it, Jake. Mother. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Now, now say a sentence that incorporates swear words, but there are some words in between that aren't swear words, like. 
dude, really angry. Have you ever seen those mother Smart. subscribe whores who always suck mother dillweed? Mother, I'm gonna kill them. Those dude. Sh head mother Merlin's pants. Great test. Wow. Great test. Can, that can never go on the internet ever. <laughs> That's horrible. Hey, what's up? Which luts are the best luts to go by? <laughs> best luts to go by? Previously, it was ill to bat. <laughs> right now. It's our LUT pack. What? What? We have a LUT pack? What? Yeah, that's right actually guys. I have been hard at work for the past week here taking some of our best looking videos and making lookup tables for them. Basically look presets. We're literally taking the color grades that I've made for our videos and I'm giving them to you guys. Well, for a price. It's because I put a lot of work into them trying to make sure that they can work across a whole bunch of different types of footage and making sure I can give out log versions, Rec. 709 versions. Anyways, in other words, we are selling some of our looks from our videos, our color grades. And if you guys would like to check them out, head on over to creatorpresets.com. Uh, that is where they are on sale, along with a whole bunch of other lookup tables and presets, and uh, I think Lightroom presets as well for photography. Uh, Sawyer Hartman, a friend of ours, is putting it together. He wanted to basically create a way that different YouTubers and photographers and Instagrammers could all get together and share some of the tools of what they do uh, with people like you. Anime Fidget Spinner, uh, Nerf Team Fortress with like the punchy kind of oranges and reds that really bring out the Nerf guns. Two color grades from the division, which give us like a really gritty cinematic look. A really hit Hipster film grade from the Master Chief Doesn't Want to Die video. <laughs> I have Jason Bourne teaches Thanksgiving. Everybody does the Hollywood blue and teal these days, but this one takes a step in the yellow and green direction. We have Nerf John Wick, my second favorite one of the bunch, which is the poacher uh, color grade. And I spent a long time on that back in the day putting it together. And that one really makes any forest scene just come to life really well. We have my favorite one, the Assassin's Creed 3 summer to fall look. Think. Right. Boom. Wow. So this is what it's like, summertime. This is what it's like. Wow. So, summertime, fall. And you can use this in any program that supports lookup tables. Heck, you can even like put it into your monitor for your camera if it supports that, so you can actually see your footage through a lookup table, which is pretty cool. And technically you're gonna get 18, because you're getting a, a log version and a Rec. Oh, okay. 709 version of each one. 